Hello. Welcome to Civil Engineering uh, Fluid Mechanics course. This is uh, CE uh, 3603. Uh, my name is uh, Frat uh, Testik. I'm a professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering Department at uh, UTSA. So um, today, this module is uh, to welcome you for this course, uh, to this course, and also to go over the uh, syllabus. And uh, so let me share my screen and then we can go over the syllabus one by one and discuss about important points about this uh, course uh, throughout the uh, syllabus. Okay, now you should be uh, seeing the course uh, syllabus. So again, this is CE 3603. Uh, fluid mechanics course. This is a three credit course. Uh, this course has a, a laboratory component. You should have already registered uh, to your lab session as uh, either A, this is um, A1 is the lectures and AA or AB are the uh, labs. Uh, you will have a, a separate uh, laboratory module um, that discusses the uh, syllabus. So we will also provide you a syllabus for the uh, different laboratory modules. So uh, when we go through this uh, syllabus, I would like you to uh, pay attention uh, to the uh, general structure of the syllabus. And then I will also provide you up to date um, uh, syllabus uh, through Blackboard. So this particular syllabus that we are looking at on the screen may not be 100% up to date, although it is uh, mostly complete. Uh, and I will provide you the up to date uh, uh, syllabus uh, through Blackboard. Uh, but the basics of this course, this is a fully online in an uh, uh, course. Uh, the format of the course is asynchronous, basically meaning that I will be providing you modules uh, at different times throughout the semester and we will not be meeting uh, at a certain time. Uh, there's an exception, I will talk about it. Uh, so there is a, here is a clarification for what I said. This course has no required meeting times. All materials, activities, and evaluations except the virtual office hours. So this is important, except the virtual office hours are provided as asynchronously, okay? Now, for the office hours, I will hold two synchronous sessions. Uh, these will be virtual office hours. And I'll talk about the details of these office hours, but these office hours will be on Mondays and Wednesdays uh, between uh, 12 and 12.50 uh, p.m. So two times per week, we will have an office hours with me. And you will also have an office hour with the TA, which I will also mention that. Uh, later in this uh, syllabus. Now, uh, the asynchronous part of the course, basically the modules, etc., it's uh, you can uh, study those at your own pace at any time. Uh, when it comes to the virtual office hours, which is uh, which are synchronous sessions, uh, you do not have to attend these sessions. So attendance to these sessions is optional and they will not be part of your final grade. But I would highly encourage you to attend the office hours and we will discuss about it uh, very soon uh, in the syllabus. Now, this section is public health considerations. Please read this sec uh, section. This is uh, related to COVID-19 actions. Um, so contact information for me. Again, my name is Frat Testik. Um, I'm a professor of civil and environmental engineering department at UTSA. We may have already met uh, some of you before, uh, but if not, this is the semester that we will uh, meet. Um, office hours uh, are Mondays and Wednesdays between 12 and 12.50 p.m. Um, I will hold the office hours virtually using Blackboard Collaborate session. And, um, you can reach me also through my email address, which is um, my first name, frat, dot, my last name, testic, at utsa.edu, all right? Uh, 
throughout this, this is a very long syllabus, about 14 pages. You will see, I'll skip some of the information, but I would highly recommend you to read uh, everything in this uh, syllabus. Uh, throughout the syllabus, you will see such notes. For example, here, uh, you can uh, refer to the student resource section for important information uh, on the student disability services, etc. Now, when you click on uh, a particular highlighted uh, text on the PDF files that you will receive, you will be uh, directly uh, sent to the relevant portion of the syllabus or the web page also. Now, um, some notes about the office hour and communication plan. This is important. As I mentioned, we will have synchronous virtual office hours on Mondays and Wednesdays uh, between 12 and 12.50 p.m. We will use uh, Blackboard Collaborate uh, platform for this purpose. So I will set an office uh, hour uh, session and then you will be able to join to this session at these set days and times. Now, this is important. You are highly encouraged to attend the office hour rather than email communication for questions, okay? I know that it's very tempting to send emails, but this is not an effective way of communication, especially in engineering. So these office hours are for you. So please make use of them at your best, uh, uh, as much as you can. Now, uh, there are certain uh, things, for example, I cannot or I'm not allowed to communicate about grades through email. So emails will not be a good option for that. But there are many other inherent challenges for discussions on uh, homework, exam, and other cl class problems through emails. So that's why I highly encourage you to uh, discuss uh, or see me through the office hour because um, I will not be able to, here is the thing. So we are in engineering department. So most of our questions, uh, for example, may involve mathematics, right? So this is just an example. So it is very difficult to explain a mathematical uh, question or, or a problem that involves mathematics over an email. You may be able to perfectly formulate your question, uh, yet I may not be able to understand uh, your question uh, through an email. Similarly, I may be able to understand your question, but I may not be able to express or I may not be able to teach exactly what I want to teach over an email. So this will not be an effective communication. So I highly encourage you to attend the virtual office hours, which gives us an interactive uh, platform so we can have a very efficient uh, discussion and I can understand what, where your uh, you know, what your question is about, uh, what is uh, needed uh, so that I can um, explain the uh, concepts, questions, uh, and uh, theory uh, better. So it's very important to have these questions and answers over an interactive platform, which is Blackboard Collaborate for this course. Now, uh, the TA will also have office hours uh, our teaching assistant is Rupayan Saha for this uh, semester. He is my uh, graduate uh, student. He is my PhD student. He will have uh, two uh, office hours per week. And uh, for this semester, uh, the office hours are uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. So TA's office hours are on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. So basically, Mondays and Wednesdays are my office hours, Tuesdays and Thursdays are the TA's office hours, which means that we have four office hours or four days of the week, we have office hours. This is, we intentionally spread it throughout the semester so that uh, you can reach one of us uh, during these virtual office hours and ask your questions, okay? Please make sure that uh, you utilize these office hours as efficient as possible. Now, uh, TA's email address is also provided here. Um, so in case you may want to communicate with him through email. Now, again, 
uh, both uh, I and the TA uh, will be uh, holding office hours uh, through Blackboard Collaborate session. We will set office hours uh, at the set days and times. So when you go to Blackboard, you may not see, if you go one day ahead of time, you may not see the set office hour and time. Typically, uh, the office hour uh, session is set um, you know, five, 10 minutes before this set day and time. So uh, you want to be uh, on time to attend the office hours. Um, so since the office hours on, are on Blackboard Collaborate, uh, you need to uh, familiarize uh, yourself uh, for this platform. And um, if you want to reach the TA or me, um, during the course, you can either direct the email uh, us uh, or uh, use the send email tool on Blackboard. Now, this is very important. I want each one of you to make sure that your email address on Blackboard is up to date and you receive emails through Blackboard uh, because we will uh, use intense, we will use uh, Blackboard intensely and most of the course announcements will be mainly through emails uh, via Blackboard or some posts on uh, Blackboard. Now, a little bit about the course. Uh, this, in this course, we will cover introduction to fluid mechanics principles. This includes uh, fluid properties, pressure variations, forces due to fluid pressure, analytical treatment of the fluid motion, flow in pipes, and other important topics. As I mentioned, we have a laboratory session uh, attached to this course. Uh, and these laboratory uh, sessions will have uh, virtual laboratory experiments. So we will have modules. You will, uh, you know, uh, learn the theory of the laboratory experiments. Then you will uh, watch a, a laboratory module, which explains, uh, which demonstrates how the experiments are done. Then you will be provided with the data and information to work on the uh, laboratory assignments. Uh, for this semester, we will have five laboratory modules, uh, meaning you will have five virtual uh, laboratories with relevant assignments. You will get an email and relevant information about the uh, laboratory uh, component of this course from the TA uh, soon. An important point is uh, dynamics is the prerequisite for this course. You need to have a C or better grade if not, uh, you want to consider uh, taking this course at a later uh, semester. Uh, you can read uh, this section. This section uh, summarizes the course objectives and outcomes uh, for this course. So I'll skip this part. You can read it later. Uh, course format. This is an entirely online course. As I mentioned, it is going to be taught in an asynchronous uh, format. Um, there will be no required class meetings on campus and there will be lecture and laboratory modules and synchronous uh, virtual office hours. Uh, here is some information about course navigation instructions and uh, important points are uh, in table one, which is at the end of this syllabus, uh, I provided a, a table uh, with the course timeline. Uh, this timeline, we will go over this, discusses uh, the specific topics that will be covered, when they will be covered, and corresponding chapters in the textbook. Also, it provides information about the midterm and uh, final exam uh, dates. So for the lecture component, which is this component of this course, uh, modules will include uh, discussions on the theory and concepts of uh, fluid uh, problems. Uh, and then we will, uh, in each module, uh, at different times, we'll also mention about real world examples of what is covered. And we will also solve exercise problems uh, with uh, solutions. Now, for every topic that we will cover, we will have an exercise problem uh, that we will cover in this module. Uh, first, we cover the theory and concepts, and then we solve an example problem on this uh, concept. Uh, there will be two modules available 
for each week of the semester and modules for the week will be released on Sundays at 8 p.m. So for a given week, uh, we will, uh, I will release two modules on Sunday at 8 p.m. Each module will be corresponding one lecture. Uh, that would be if it was a face-to-face, -face, uh, you know, format. Now, uh, course materials. Uh, required textbook is uh, Donald uh, Alger, Barbara Williams, Clayton Crowe, John Robertson. Uh, it's the name of the textbook is Engineering Fluid Mechanics. Uh, this is uh, by Wiley and it's 11th edition. Uh, be very careful. We will use 11th edition. The course has now, I think, 12th edition. I'm not sure about 13th edition, but there is 12th edition but we will be using 11th edition. This is important because the problem numbers that we will assign for homework will be different on the 11th and 12th edition. So I don't want you to solve wrong uh, problems, okay? So you need to use 11th edition. Uh, one reason why I picked 11th edition is that um, this is uh, the edition that we have been using for a while. So you would have uh, used books easily accessible so you can also uh, save uh, in terms of uh, finances uh, if you want to go with the uh, second-hand uh, books. And there is technically not much uh, difference between the 11th and 12th editions. Now, uh, technology requirements and support, you can read this section here, university technology solutions information here, uh, and now uh, this section is important. So let's focus on this a little bit. Um, this is assignments, assessments, and grading information. So in this course, we will have two midterm exams. Okay, we will have two midterm exams and one final exam. We will also have homework assignments and we will also have laboratory uh, assignments and, uh, and so on. So uh, the total grade uh, will be, your final grade will be a combination of uh, the grades that you will get uh, from these uh, components. So from the midterm examinations, uh, you will get 25% uh, of your final grade. So if you have two midterms, so for each midterm, you will have 25% of your final grade. So two midterms, meaning 50% of your final grades will be uh, governed by the midterm examinations. Final examination will contribute to 25% of your final grade. Homework will contribute to 15% of your final grade and laboratory component will uh, contribute to 10% of the, uh, your final uh, grade. Now, uh, the tentative grading scale is um, here I provided the typical catalog uh, grading scale. 90 to 100 is A, 8 to 89 is B, 7 to 79 is C, et cetera, et cetera, here. Now, um, here I put a note here. Uh, here it says grading scale for final letter grades and the range of each letter grade is subject to change. The instructor reserves the right to scale or group the grades before assigning the final letter grades. Now, what, does the, what this means is that, although tentatively I say A is 9200, this is subject to change. I may uh, change this scale uh, based on uh, the average, class average, based on uh, the difficulty of the questions, et cetera, okay? Uh, my intention is not making 91 or, you know, moving A, uh, the lower bound for A, from 90 to 95 or higher, you know, the, not above 90. That's not the intention. The intention is I may uh, lower the lower bound of the uh, letter grade. So for example, if, I, uh, if the questions are more difficult than typical uh, or the average is lower than uh, what is anticipated, et cetera, for some reason, uh, I reserve the right to move the lower bound uh, of uh, letter scales uh, to uh, uh, lower values. For example, um, 80, 
eight, nine and above maybe A, 85 and above maybe an A or so, okay? So I may play with these uh, scales, but this will be only to favor you, to, to uh, uh, positively affect your grade, not uh, to uh, lower your grades, okay? So an important uh, extra credit option or pass opportunity in this uh, course is, uh, there's a possibility that there may be an extra credit uh, for the ABET folders. So please keep all of your exam uh, solutions, uh, homework, lab reports, et cetera, throughout the semester. And at the end of the semester, I may ask uh, you to provide me ABET folders, your ABET folders. I will explain in the email what I need for the ABET folders at that time. So once, uh, you provide these ABET folders, um, you know, full. So if everything is included, you would uh, get an extra credit. So if there is such an opportunity, I will send you an email at the end of the semester or towards the end of the semester. But you need to be, uh, you need to keep all your uh, work throughout the semester to be able to uh, provide such a uh, folder. Um, so we will announce the homework assignments and due dates. Um, similarly, laboratory assignments and due dates will be provided uh, for, uh, by the laboratory syllabus and also relevant emails uh, throughout the semester. Uh, a very important point is that late homework and lab report submissions will not be accepted. So you should always be careful with the submission dates and time uh, you should not miss the deadlines if you want to get a uh, grade for that assignment. Now, here are some course expectations and policies. Uh, you can find the uh, information about announcements. Typically, announcements will be through emails or Blackboard posts. Uh, syllabus provides announcements maybe in the modules, etc. It's your responsibility to follow the announcements and complete all of the assignments, exams, reports, etc. Now, submission of the coursework. Uh, all assignments are due at 11.59 p.m., basically one minute before the midnight. Uh, this is selected by the Blackboard. Uh, we don't want to uh, date change. So uh, on the designated day, uh, if there's a change to this time, I will note it or I will send it, uh, note it in the email or the relevant uh, document. But for now, everything is due 11.59 p.m. on the designated day. All assignments uh, will be submitted online uh, through UTSA Blackboard's course site on or before the specified due date and submitted to the location designated in the assignment description. So uh, this is also an uh, important note, make sure you save your assignment somewhere that you can easily retrieve it later. Okay, this is important. We don't know what's gonna happen, so you may need to resubmit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, an important point is uh, internet has uh, its own surprises. So Blackboard uh, can go down and it goes down occasionally. So um, make sure that um, you may want to uh, submit your homework uh, or assignment earlier to account for such uh, down uh, times on the system. Okay, so this is your responsibility. Be careful. Quality of work. Um, so here it says all work must be professional quality, neatly presented, grammatically correct, and free of spelling and punctuation errors. Uh, an important point is you will be submitting your homework or other assignments uh, by scanning them, right? So it is your responsibility uh, that the scanned documents are top quality. So they should be very high quality. Image quality should be good. They should be readable. We should be able to read it. We should not, uh, the quality of the, or readability should not be compromised. So this is your responsibility, which means that you need to check the document 
and everything should be in PDF format. Use PDF format, by the way, uh, for the scan documents. Um, check the document, make sure that everything is uh, readable, and then submit your homework. Um, if we cannot read it properly or completely, then we cannot also grade it. Okay, so be very careful, this is important. Uh, here is some information about video and audio recording permissions, please read that. Uh, information about course evaluation, please read that. Uh, attendance, uh, students are expected to study every lecture and laboratory session module. Um, this is not a face-to-face -face class, right? So I'm not going to take attendance, but you are expected to study every lecture and laboratory session module. You are responsible for every lecture and laboratory session uh, module. Uh, makeup exams, this is very important. Makeup exams will be scheduled only for university excused absences. Other than that, there will not be any uh, makeup exam uh, provided. So be very careful. Uh, do not miss any exams. Only if you have a university excused absence, and this is the, you know, a rather strict uh, definition, and um, uh, the, these university excused absences are rather firm excuses. So unless you have one of those, you will not get a makeup exam. So please do not, uh, plan on or uh, miss any uh, exam, this is very important. And if you uh, miss an exam due to a university excuse absence, then you need to make arrangements with me so that we can handle uh, the makeup. Here, uh, please read this interpersonal interactions and online etiquette uh, for uh, this online course. Uh, information on the copyright and fair use, please read this section. Um, in this uh, part, you will see many UTSA student resources that you can utilize. For example, technical support, you can find it in this section. Uh, accommodations for students with disabilities in this section. Academic support, yeah, this discuss about SI sessions, tutoring services, academic success coaching, writing center, etc. And uh, a few other uh, resources uh, you can find uh, throughout this uh, syllabus. Then you can uh, read also additional UTSA policies, FERPA, Campus Carry, Student Code of Conduct, and Scholastic, scholastic Dishonesty Transitionary. These are basically UTSA policies, uh, and uh, you can uh, read. Uh, I copy paste uh, to on the syllabus so that you can read what UTSA policies if you're not familiar with that and uh, so that you have this uh, on this document. Campus safety and emergency preparedness, etc. They are all here. Now, this is important. This is changes. Um, here, uh, this syllabus uh, may change at any time during the semester, okay? This is the most uh, recent version of the syllabus, okay? Based on the most recent available information uh, at this time. So there may be changes in the syllabus. Uh, I will do my best effort uh, to inform you uh, on the changes uh, in the syllabus in a timely uh, manner. So, if there are changes in the syllabus, you need to uh, follow uh, those changes and you will know, uh, you will have the final versions of the syllabus, etc. Now, this is very important. This table I prepared for the course timeline. So in this course, we will have um, different modules, video modules. In each module, uh, for example, they will be uh, 20, 30, 40, sometimes even longer uh, uh, time periods. Each module corresponds to one lecture in a face-to-face -face, uh, teaching setting. So uh, today, for example, uh, this module is module zero, which is welcome and uh, discussion on the syllabus. And uh, here in this table, you can find uh, different modules and what is covered in each module. 
and the corresponding chapters in the textbook. These are the dates of the uh, lectures. However, as I mentioned, I will provide two modules of the week on Sunday of the week, okay? So um, I will uh, make two modules available on Sunday of a given week, although these corresponds to Monday and Wednesday times. These are what uh, the lecture times would be if it was a face-to-face -face, uh, class. So uh, this would give you information about, for example, this is the first week, this is the second week, you will have first week on Sunday, you will have these two modules in the second week, you will have these two modules, etc. Um, here you can find the midterm information. Midterm is tentatively on October 5th. These are all subject to change. If there's a change, I will let you know, but October 5th is the tentative date. And um, just a little bit uh, information about the midterms. Uh, midterms, for example, midterm one, all contents from the beginning of the course will be included. Okay, so all of these material will be included in the midterm one. When it comes to midterm two, it is November 11th tentatively. Um, it will be mainly from uh, whatever covered after midterm one and until midterm two. However, we cannot skip the first part of the course because they are all related. It's just the emphasis will be on the second part from midterm one to midterm two, but that doesn't mean that you will not be responsible for the uh, first part before midterm one because we cannot really separate all of the concepts uh, in, the, in this uh, course. They are all uh, connected. And uh, for the final exam, final exam will be on uh, December 2nd and it will be comprehensive. All materials will be covered uh, throughout the course. Now, important point here, I tried to provide uh, some chapter or section information here. Uh, there may be other parts in the uh, chapter in, the, uh, in this uh, course uh, in different se sections it may have been uh, covered. So uh, this doesn't mean that the rest of the textbook is, uh, you can skip the rest of the textbook. These are the most relevant sections, but other, the remaining sections are also uh, necessary. So I highly recommend you to follow the textbook. Uh, these are the important sections, but also read all the uh, other parts of textbook that you find uh, necessary. Uh, one important thing is the lecture notes in this course uh, will cover everything that will be included in the midterms or final exams. However, the textbook provides a very good uh, additional uh, resource. So um, in that sense, I recommend you to also study the relevant materials uh, from the uh, textbook. And uh, that's all for this module. Uh, thank you very much.